Hi everybody, this lesson is on multiplication and division of fractions. If you haven't already, I highly recommend that you watch my video on introduction of fractions where uh, you reduce and learn about equivalent fractions as well as my video lesson on mixed proper and improper fractions because you will need to know how to do some conversion between the two uh, improper and mixed for this video. So just like I did in my addition and subtraction of fractions videos, I thought it was a really good idea to just kind of lay out the ground rules that you're going to need to keep in mind when you're multiplying and dividing. Um, the first thing that I have here is that you can only multiply proper and improper fractions, which means that we don't multiply and divide mixed fractions, at least not in this video. Um, unlike adding and subtracting fractions, you actually do not need a common denominator, which is kind of nice. Um, and the other thing that you're probably not used to is that you're actually going to multiply uh, numerators and denominators. Um, for adding and subtracting, you actually kept the denominator that was common and you just reduced in the end. But for this, you're going to multiply both the top and the bottom. Um, and uh, I, this works actually for division, but uh, I will explain once we get to the division um, slide. Uh, and the last thing that I also wanted to kind of remind you if you didn't know already, but every number in the world is a fraction. Um, we just don't often go ahead and put um, it in a fraction just to save us some time and just to make it look cleaner. But every number has a one in the denominator if you don't see it. So for example, the number two um, is equivalent to two over one because two divided by one is just two. Um, so if you are looking to put a number as a fraction, which you will um, when you're dividing anyways um, and multiplying, um, you need to know that 4 is 4 over 1, and even the number 1,000 is the same thing as 1,000 over 1. Very important as we move forward. So let's begin with multiplying. So keeping what I had set in mind on the first slide, you don't need a common denominator and you cannot uh, multiply mixed fractions. So in the first example that I've given you here, um, I haven't given you a mixed fraction, so I'm already good to start my multiplication. So uh, as I mentioned, unlike adding and subtracting, you're actually going to go both across the top and on the bottom when you're multiplying. And doing that will give you a 15 at the top in the numerator position and a 45 on the bottom because 9 times 5 is 45. Um, but as I've mentioned in previous videos and I'll mention again here, you always want your final answer to be reduced and if possible mixed as in not improper. And 15 over 45 is actually not reduced. And you might be thinking like, hey, I'm going to divide the top and the bottom by 5, which is fine because that is a common factor between the both of them. Um, you're always going to want to look for the greatest common factor just to kind of save yourself the time from reducing 8 different times. So I'm going to let you know that a common factor between a 15, the greatest common factor between 15 and 45 is actually 15 itself. Because what happens is you get 1 over 3. Um, and that is the answer for this first uh, multiplication question. This next question, though, we don't like because it's mixed. So we're going to have to change it to, I'm going to say change to improper. Um, because that's the only way you can't make it improper in this case. You can't make it proper in this case. So um, if you're not familiar with how to do that, please watch my video lesson because I'm just going to go ahead and change it to the proper way here. So the, my first fraction becomes 11 over 2. You're still multiplying, and my second fraction, fraction becomes uh, 31 over 7. So now I can actually go ahead with my multiplication since it's not mixed. And doing so will mean that I need to multiply across the top and multiply across the bottom. Now, because we're multiplying, assume that you're always going to get probably bigger numbers than when you are adding. Because in this case, I get a big number like 341 over um, 14. And as I mentioned earlier, um, although this is fine, I mean for some as a final answer, we do want it to be mixed and reduced as our final answer. So what happens here is we're going to change and I'm going to do, or I could show you at least some quick division. Uh, how many times does 14 go into 341? Well, I can tell you that it actually goes in 24 times with a remainder of 5. And again, if you're not sure what all this means, please go ahead and watch my video on how to do this. So this means that my whole number is 24. 
my remainder becomes my uh, numerator and my denominator is still 14 and the 5 over 14 is actually reduced so this here is um, my final answer. So that was multiplication of fractions, pretty straightforward, pretty easy going as long as you remember of course the rules that I had mentioned. But now we're going to look at some division of fractions. So before we do anything about division of fractions we need to define a new term that might be familiar to you, maybe it's not, but it's called the reciprocal. Now the reciprocal of a number, just in layman's terms, is uh, the reciprocal is something that when you multiply, the if you multiply something by the reciprocal, the answer or the product should be 1. Um, so very important, the product needs to be equal to 1. I'm just going to say the product of a term and its reciprocal equals 1. In other layman's terms, it just means flip fraction. And you can hear me probably write this frantically, but it's pretty important and not that difficult. So let's talk about what that even means. If I were to give you a fraction like 3 over 4, to multiply 3 over 4 by something that will give the answer 1, all you have to do is flip it and get 4 over 3. And in the end, your answer is 12 over 12, which equals to 1. So this is the reciprocal of 3 over 4. Uh, so the reciprocal just means flip the fraction. And the reason why I told you at the very beginning why it was important for you to know that a number is, uh, is a fraction with over 1 is because if you were to ask to flip or find the reciprocal of the number 4, it's actually a good idea for you to know that it's actually 4 over 1. Because then what happens is you get 1 over 4 um, as the reciprocal. And I put an equal sign here, but I shouldn't have. I should have just put like a, an arrow because it's not the same. And of course, if you were to multiply this, you would get 4 over 4, which is equal to 1. So that's the goal of a reciprocal. And once again, 1 over 4 is the reciprocal of 4, or 4 over 1. Now, why is that important? Why am I talking about this? Well, dividing actually requires you to flip the second fraction. So find the reciprocal of the second or the last fraction, which I've written here, and actually multiply. So you're not actually dividing when you're doing division of fractions. You're actually multiplying, so long as you remember to flip the second fraction. All of the other rules that I showed you apply. Um, you can only multiply and divide. I should have said you can only multiply and divide proper and improper fractions. And you know what? I'm just going to change that now. Divide and multiply uh, proper and improper fractions. Uh, once again, you don't need a common denominator. Once again, you are still multiplying the numerators and the denominators. But like I said, you do need to do one extra step, which is flip the second one before you multiply. So what does that look like exactly? So for number one here, I have a really good example um, where I've given you um, 13 over 15 divided by 7 over 30. So just very simply, uh, first of all, we don't need to care. We don't care about common denominators, as I've mentioned. So what we're essentially just going to do is we're going to flip the second fraction and multiply. So the first one looks the same, but we will change our 7 over 30 to 30 over 7. And now that we've done that, we can go ahead and multiply. Right, so we flip the second one and we multiply. And we're doing the same rules that we did when we multiplied. You multiply across the top, you multiply across the bottom, and you get 390 over 105. Um, and as I've mentioned, this is okay, but we do prefer it to be reduced and mixed. So in order to do that, we're going to ask ourselves how many times does 105 go into 390 and then find our remainder, what's left over. So in this case, um, we can go right ahead and say that 1 over 105 um, goes into 390 three whole times with a remainder of 75 over 105. And again, this is good, except my fraction, my 75 um, over 105, can actually be reduced just a tiny bit further. Um, and our final reduced answer should be 5 over 7. Again, I'm not wasting too much time showing you because you can always watch another video um, on this. 
Uh, but now we're going to go into our final example for this lesson, where I've given you what we're not allowed to have, right, for um, uh, multiplying and dividing, which is mixed fractions. So once again, mixed is bad. We don't like that. So we're going to change to improper, and I'm just going to do this quickly. If you're not sure how to do this, please watch my video on it. Um, and what happens is I'm not changing anything except for the actual fractions, like I'm still dividing. So I would get something that looks like 25 over 7 divided by uh, 50 over 21. So that's me changing my mixed fractions to improper fractions. So now I can go ahead and do the steps that I need to do to divide, which is keeping the first fraction as is, finding the reciprocal of the second fraction, and then multiplying. So we will once again multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. We get big numbers, 525 over 350. Uh, again, great answer, but I do prefer it to be reduced and mixed. So I ask myself how many times 350 goes into uh, 525. If you're curious, <laughs> well, you should be because I'm gonna tell you, it goes in one whole time. I'll make my arrow a bit longer here. It goes into it one whole time with a remainder of 175 over my 350, which was my original denominator. But again, not quite good enough because I can reduce this fraction. So um, doing so, actually, fun fact, you could divide this by 175. You get a really nice fraction of one and one half. Um, and that's essentially it for division and multiplication of fractions. Um, always remembering that they're both essentially the same, um, except you need to know the reciprocal. Um, so very important that you put that in as just kind of like a general statement here. It might not be a bad idea for us to add this um, to our first page here. Why not? It's very important to know um, as our number five. And then you have a page that pretty much outlines everything you need to know for multiplication and division. I hope this video lesson has helped you.